We'd like to move right now into the, uh, uh, to the, the first of the three main uh, sessions. Uh, uh, the topic of this session is to what can we observe about these nearby stars, uh, uh, particularly the nearest stars, uh, from the solar system. Uh, the, uh, uh, to chair the session is uh, 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 Dr. Olivier Guillon, who uh, has a joint appointment with the Subaru Telescope and the University of Arizona. Uh, the, uh, I'm particularly impressed with Olivier, not only because he's a really cool astronomer in person, but he doesn't sleep. So, the, uh, uh, so without further ado, uh, Dr. Guillon. Thank you for, uh, for coming to this very exciting uh, session. I, in case you were asleep, not like me, um, and, and you just woke up and you missed the recent news, there are probably three things you need to check out. First, politics, as always. A couple of interesting things happen through the world. Second, you should uh, know that gravitational waves exist. Um, and third, which is what we're going to talk about today, is that M stars are full of planets. And that's very interesting at several levels. Uh, first, uh, it's easy to miss that most stars are actually low-mass stars, like M stars, red dwarfs. There's probably about 200 billion uh, such stars in the galaxy. There are 200 people in this room. If each one of us was sent on a mission to uh, look at every M star and its planetary system and spend 10 seconds per system, uh, it would take 317 years to complete the survey and get back together and, and tell wonderful stories about what we have seen. 10 seconds per planet, if there's one planet per uh, star. And whoever gets sent to Trappist-1 is, is quite unlucky. Um, the second interesting thing is that, uh, so what that means is that statistically, if you're looking for the nearest rocky planets in habitable zones, you're going to be looking at M stars. Uh, and it's, uh, the best example, of course, is the one we just heard about, Proxima Centauri b, the closest star to us. Uh, turns out to have one such planet. Um, the second very exciting thing about these stars is we have very unique observational uh, opportunities uh, with M stars. Not only there, the, there are a lot of them that are quite close because they're so abundant, which makes everything easier, uh, but the short period for habitable planet means that the radial velocity signal is quite strong, uh, which is also due to the fact that the uh, star mass is, is small. The transit probability is high, as we just heard, we're, going, we're starting to have, and we're going to have more of these nearby M-type uh, uh, stars which have transiting potentially habitable planets, which is extremely exciting because we can actually measure uh, atmosphere composition and, and do a lot of interesting, we can constrain the planet much better. Um, they're also, because the star is much fainter than the sun, uh, the contrast, uh, if we look a direct imaging between the star and the planet is, is, actually in, is, is actually not as challenging as if we are looking for an Earth or on the Sun. So we are thinking now we can actually do direct imaging uh, of, of these planets with the next generation of ground-based telescopes. Um, so that's, those are the things we're going to talk about in this session. Uh, we're going to ask, I think we're going to try to answer two main questions. Uh, the first one is, is um, uh, how do we characterize these planets uh, and hopefully actually detect remotely the presence of life. And the second one is, are those targets, are those stars uh, suitable for life? Uh, they are a little bit different. There are some interesting uh, uh, things that are quite different from, from our Sun-Earth uh, system. Um, and before I hand over the, the podium to the speakers, I'd like to finish with another note, which is about Starshot. Uh, I don't mean to make Starshot even harder than it already is, but uh, after we go to a couple of stars, let's, let's imagine we try to sample all stars in our galaxy, all uh, M-type stars in our galaxy. And let's imagine, I'm looking at our chief engineer here, that we can launch a Starshot uh, Starship every five minutes. Uh, it sounds really relatively easy, at 20% the speed of light. It would take two million years to launch enough of them uh, to sample all M stars in the galaxy. Uh, so this is interesting because it would take two million years. That means the time scale to actually get all this information is not limited by the speed at which the Starship travels. Um, if it travels at 20% the speed of light, we're actually going to get to the other side of the galaxy in half a million years, which is, uh, which, and we'll still be uh, only a quarter of the way into launching Starships by that time. Um, so that's our next challenge for uh, a few years down the road. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so now we're gonna uh, hear, uh, uh, I'm gonna leave it to the, to, to the speakers. Uh, uh, the first of our speaker is Courtney Dressing from Caltech and soon Berkeley. Yes. Uh, and she's gonna tell us about uh, potentially habitable planets around AM stars, how we find them and what are opportunities to characterize them. Thank you. <laughs> 